I think you're in the chat. Um, I think you're here, but let's just do this together now. This is a function, guys. I hope you guys all remember functions. Um, and it says here, find the value of x of which the function um, h of x is undefined. 2x plus 3 over 5 minus x. So guys, the only value where this is undefined, by the way, guys, undefined means when something is being divided by 0. So that's what undefined means. When something is divided by 0, guys, it's undefined. So the only value that would give us a zero in the denominator, guys, would be x is equal to five, because we'd end up with two times five plus three over five minus five, and this would actually give us 13 over zero, which is undefined. So what's the value of which this is undefined? X is equal to five, that's the answer for sure. Trey, does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Dahlia, makes sense? Yeah. Nathan? Yes, sir. All right, guys. So we're going to do something called the inverse of a function. We've done it before, but let's do it again. So h of x is equal to 2x plus three over five minus x. But it says find an expression for the inverse. How do we do the inverse again, guys? You guys remember the steps? Trey, you remember the steps for find the inverse? Any at all? Uh, you change it to y equals two x plus three over five minus x. All right, so the first step, guys, is let y equal to h of x. So let y equal to the function. So y is going to be equal to 2x plus 3 over 5 minus x. Tajan, you remember the second step? Tajan, you're with me? If you don't remember the second step, bro, see it here. The second step when finding the inverse, guys, is to make x a subject of the formula. Cool. That's the second step. So now we need to make X a subject, guys. So we need to put things in terms of just um, X. How do we do this? I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 minus X. Because I need to take X out of that denominator. And I'm going to end up with 2X plus 3 is equal to 5 minus X times Y then this would actually give me 2x plus 3 is equal to 5y minus xy. I'm going to put the x's together and leave the y's. So I'm going to get 2x minus xy is equal to 5y minus 3. So I put the number over here and I put x's together. Then all I have to do now, guys, is factor out an x out of these. And I'm going to get x times 2 minus y is equal to 5y minus 3. Then I just need to divide both sides by 2 minus y. And I'm going to end up with 2 minus y. This will cancel that. And x is going to be equal to, oh man, where did I put it? Oh man, I don't have no space. Well, no, let me put it down here. Okay. So X is going to be equal to 5Y minus 3 over 2 minus Y. That's the answer. Cool. No, well, it's not the answer. The last step, guys, the third step is to let the Y equal to X. And we're going to say the inverse, which is H to the negative 1 of x is equal to 5x minus 3 over 2 minus x. So that's the answer, guys. Let me put the answer over here in white. The answer is h to the negative 1 of x is equal to 5x minus 3 over 2x, well, 2 minus x, sorry. 
So guys, these are the three steps when finding the inverse. The first step is to um, let y equal to the, to the function. The next step is to make x the subject of the formula, which we did. Then the last step is to let the y equal to an x. And then you write that the inverse is equal to the equation with the x in it. Cool. But don't worry about it, guys. I'm going to be sending you a short, a short video on this as well, so you can remember how to do the inverse for the exam. So you should be good. Cool. And I'm going to just put it here. 5x minus 3 over 2 minus x. Cool. So that's the inverse. Cool. And that gives us three marks. So three marks. Remember the three steps, guys. Y, let Y equal to H of X. Make X a subject. Second step is make X a subject. Third step is let Y be equal to X. And then you're going to say H to the negative one of X is equal to what you found. Cool. All right, so maybe we need to take a break though. We've been going kind of super hard. Um, uh, we've been going kind of hard still, but, but let's do this really quickly too. I think these are really easy to do. So guys, uh, remember there's a formula that you need to know. I'll probably send it to you guys tonight still. Um, y is equal, well, not Y. M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember guys, you just need to remember this formula. Cool, you need to remember it. And there's a graph here guys, and it says, um, it shows a straight line and there's a point P on the line. And it says here, using the graph, determine the gradient of the line. So it's kind of easy to determine the gradient guys. We just need to use this point, the P, the P is at, um, where is that point? Uh, the X value is a five and the Y value is a zero. So that's X one and Y one. And then I'm gonna use this point up here still. I want to use that point. One, two, three, four. So this point is um, zero, four. I'm gonna use that point. Uh, let me call this point uh, P, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q. Let's call it Q. So these are my two points, and this is my X2, and this is my Y2. And that's all I really need to find my gradient. So I'm going to end up with um, Y2, which is 4, minus um, Y1, which is 0, over um, X2, which is uh, 0, minus 5. And this is going to end up being... Uh, 4 over negative 5, which is the same thing as negative 4 over 5. So that's the gradient for this line, guys. M is equal to negative 4 over 5. So this is really easy. This is easy to me still. Um, uh, let me check with Thalia. Thalia, easy? Pardon me? Is it easy? <laughs> is it OK? You see what I did? Yeah, I used the gradient formula. And guys, remember for any straight line, you can always use any two points on the line. So that's why I use these two points. Cool. So you always use any two points to find the gradient. Cool. Um, Trey, not so bad. So bad at all. No. From Mario, how are you feeling about this? Manageable? Feeling, yes, sir. Yeah, I think it's manageable. So the next thing to ask us now, guys, is to find the equation of the line, right? So um, guys, remember the equation of the line formula. We found the gradient, right? The gradient is negative 4 over 5. But remember, the equation of the line formula is y is equal to mx plus c, right? So we know the gradient, the gradient is negative four over five. So Y is equal to negative four over five X plus C. And for the C guys, remember that the C 
is always the y-intercept. So the C is always the number at the y, right? The number at the y is four, which is right here, three, one, two, three, four. So the y-intercept, guys, is the point where the line cuts the y-axis. So C is always the y-intercept. So it cuts the y-axis at four. So this C is definitely equal to four. So the answer is y is equal to negative four over five x plus c. Well, plus four, sorry, <laughs> plus four. Because c is equal to four, because we can see that on the y-intercept, right? So this is well easy to me. As I said, guys, easy peasy. So this is the equation of the line. The answer is y is equal to negative four over five x, which is the gradient x plus c, which is four, the y-intercept. Cool. Nathan, make sense? Yep. Nikolai, making sense to you? Yeah, it does. Adrian, making sense? So guys, the last one now, the last question now says, uh, find the equation of the perpendicular line that passes through P, cool? Yeah, now this one kind of rough still. <laughs> it kind of rough. I mean, it kind of easy still, um, but uh, it just depends. It depends on how you um, view it. So we can go back up to the graph still. Um, uh, hmm. I mean, it's kind of easy to me still. The last part, this is two marks. Uh, I think it's kind of easy to me. Let me show you what I mean, guys. So guys, this is the equation of the line, right? We found it. This is the gradient, and this is the equation of the line. So if we want to find the perpendicular line, guys, remember that the perpendicular line for the, gra the gradient for the perpendicular line is always a negative reciprocal of the other gradient, right? So this would be, flip this, you're gonna end up with five over four um, and it, it it's negative. So this was negative, so it's gonna become positive. So you're gonna end up with five over four, which is the same thing as um, 1.25. So that's the gradient for the perpendicular line. So for the perpendicular line, Y is equal to 1.25X plus C. The only problem with the perpendicular line now, guys, is that we need to find the C to find the, um, the, the answer. But it says here that the, the equation of the perpendicular line that passes through P. So they're trying to say that the perpendicular line point passes through here like that. Let me make it blue. Here, like that. But remember the point for P guys is P at that point is five and zero. Am I correct? Does that make sense guys? Make sense? I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So once yeah. you get that now, you're good. All you have to do is say Y is equal to 1.25, well, not Y, zero. We're gonna use that point. So this is Y and this is X. We're gonna use this point. Zero is equal to 1.25 times five plus C. Um, and five times 1.25 guys is gonna give us 6.25, I think. So we're going to end up with zero is equal to 6.25 plus C. So C is equal to 6.25. Well, negative 6.25, sorry. So my answer for the perpendicular line would be Y is equal to 1.25 X minus 6.25. Negative 6.25 is the um, gradient, is the um, Y intercept for that line. And the reason why it is, you can kind of see still, if you look on the, um, graph, it kind of showing you that you can end up with your y-intercept down here, don't? So I think it matches and I think it makes sense.
Nathan, it making sense to you? Romario, kind of rough. <laughs> 